today we are talking about some mistakes that beginners are making out on trail and if any of you guys are experienced backpackers already let me know in the comment section down below at the end of this video if i missed any pretty common mistakes that beginner backpackers are making and maybe we can do a couple more of these videos and help out the newer people getting into the sport or hobby whatever you want to call it starting out with number one i personally think this is the biggest mistake newer backpackers are making and that is simply not subscribing to maddie outdoors youtube channel now if you guys are new to the channel and you're not subscribed yet click on the subscribe button over here i do a ton of different videos on tips and tricks for beginner backpackers and experienced backpackers and i talk a lot about easy ways and inexpensive ways to shave weight out of your backpacking kit and make life significantly more enjoyable for yourself out on trail so like i said click on the subscribe button over there if you have not already and make sure you click on that bell notification so you get notified every single time i drop a video and mistake number two that beginner backpackers are making is relying far too much on technology, primarily their GPS. Now, be it an in-reach unit or if you're using GPS on your phone, which is pretty common, that's what I do. I load GPS programs like Gaia and ViewRanger onto my phone. And I do use those a little bit for navigation out in the backcountry. A GPS unit should just be there as a buffer to help promote your map reading skills and using a compass. I'm sure we have all seen it on Facebook groups and different social media groups, a newer backpacker getting into the sport. And they're asking about a certain trail or a certain route and they wanna get out there in the backcountry. And they start asking for a GPS track for that trail to make sure that they don't get lost. And there are so many newer backpackers out there that are using this app called All Trails and they're getting the All Trails Pro and they're downloading maps and using the GPS tracks that are loaded into All Trails. And I don't know about the rest of the world, but up here in the Canadian Rockies, there are so many rescues going on. And it's actually getting to the point up here in the Rockies where our park services are putting out notices to people getting into backpacking, and getting into hiking, to stop using these apps and stop using these GPS programs on their phone and strictly relying on the maps that they're finding online on these different app programs. Because while GPS can be a great help, like I said before, to help you know, add a little bit of extra to your navigational skills when you're using a map and compass. A lot of times GPS can be pretty spotty, especially when you start mixing in elevation gains and elevation losses. Getting a GPS signal or a cell signal is not always easy to acquire. So having some basic navigational skills is going to help you guys out so much going forward with your backpacking trips. There are so many different things that can go wrong with your GPS unit, like a screen breaking or, you know, your batteries dying and not having a battery bank or not carrying extra batteries to keep your GPS unit going. Uh, screen breakings tend to be the most common one that I do read about online. You can even lose your phone or your GPS unit. So just simply relying on a GPS unit to navigate is not the way to go. So if you're getting into backpacking, definitely get yourself some map and compass skills. Third big mistake that beginner backpackers are making is not following or not knowing leave no trace principles. If you're not familiar with leave no trace or LNT principles whatsoever, the easiest way I can explain it is leave no trace principles is a pretty basic guide on how to not be a douchebag out in the backcountry. It covers pretty basic stuff like, you know, where to set up your camp location, how to keep a clean camp, staying on trail and not picking flowers and how to dig a proper cat hole, you know, to dispose of your human waste. And, you know, anything you carry in your backpack with you, you pack it in, you're packing it out with you, not leaving stuff out in the backcountry. It's becoming so common to be out there on a backpacking trip and exploring some pretty amazing areas and, you know, trying to get an awesome photo of some amazing landscape and realizing that, you know, you've got six beer cans littered across this gorgeous mountainside or, you know, finding dog poop bags all over the place. Masks is one that we're seeing a lot now in the COVID times. And when you step off trail to do your business, it is becoming more and more common to find the white blooms of toilet paper littering the countryside. Uh, it's absolutely disgusting. I, I'm, I'm not sure how else to address this one. Maybe at some point we got to do one of those how to take a dump in the woods type videos. Uh, if you guys think that would be a good idea, let me know in the comment section down below. I, I've thought about doing it, but I, I wasn't sure if that was something people needed to see or wanted to see. I don't know if anybody wants to see how I take a poop in the woods but uh, it's a pretty, pretty basic, easy thing to do. So like I said, if you guys wanna see that video, let me know in the comments section down below. And as well in the video description, I will put some links down below to give you guys some information on LNT or leave no trace principles. So if you guys wanna do a little bit more research and you know figure out a little bit more about the LNT principles, help you guys get going on your backpacking journey, I will put those in the description down below, as I said.
Now, the fourth big mistake that I'm seeing a lot of beginner backpackers making is actually one that I've seen on a lot of social media boards recently this summer. And it's got to do with your water filter. Now, not specifically the Katadyne Be Free, but just water filters in general. And it's water filter maintenance, primarily after you get off trail. Now, maintenance for filters when you're on trail is usually pretty easy. Most filters have a way to back flush and kind of, you know, clean the filter out as you go. The Katadyne Be Free is pretty sweet. It's got directions here on the side of the bottle for how to back flush it and keep the filter clean. But when you get home from a backpacking trip is where a lot of people are having issues with their water filters and people are ruining water filters and it's costing them money in the end because they end up having to go get a new filter. And it has to do with how to properly store your water filter when you get home from your backpacking trip. You wanna get your filter to dry out as much as possible before storing it away. Because if I keep the water filter to my Be Free attached to the little hydro pack bag it comes with, this will create mold inside the water filter. And the last thing you wanna deal with when you're you know, going to filter up some water is deal with a moldy water filter. So just take in your water filter and leave it sit out on your counter in a place where it's gonna be able to dry out. Let it sit for a couple days. Once it's dried out, Put it back with the rest of the filter bag. You know, you can squeeze all the air out of it or whatever. Tighten it up. And that's how I store my Catalan Be Free. But like I said, just keeping your water filter dry as much as possible when you get home is going to help promote the longevity of your filter going forward. Fifth big mistake that we're seeing a lot of beginner backpackers making is overpacking. And we're not going to turn this into a debate between traditional backpacking and ultralight backpacking because that's not what we're talking about today at all. But there are a lot of things that beginner backpackers are just simply overpacking. And I always kind of look at it as packing their fears. There are so many different things that people are just carrying way too much of, be it carrying too much food with them out on a backpacking trip and just overestimating how hungry they're actually going to be. Because a lot of people seem to think that when you get out there on trail, you're going to be hiking a lot, you're going to be burning a lot of calories. So you're just going to need to be eating way too much food and you're going to be eating way more than you normally would. And while this makes sense in your head, when you get out there on trail, most people find that it's actually the exact opposite. And a lot of people end up eating far less food when they're out there on trail. And it usually takes a couple backpacking trips under your belt to kind of find that sweet spot for how much food you're gonna need out there on trail. You're probably gonna notice that some days you're more hungry and some days you're less hungry. And like I said, it is a bit of a balancing act and it does take a little bit of time to figure it out. Take the amount of food that you would normally eat in a regular day and you know toss a couple extra granola bars into your bag or you know some fruit snacks and stuff like that something with high calories so if you get to camp at the end of your first day and you eat your dinner and you find that you're still a little bit hungry you know you reach into your food bag you've got a couple extra granola bars or oatmeal packs or fruit snacks or whatever it is but you know you're not packing four or five days worth of extra food out there on a trip and as well as packing far too much food there are so many people out there when they go out on a backpacking trip packing way too much clothing. And when I say packing too much clothing, I literally mean packing a change of clothes for every single day that they're out there on a backpacking trip. The cold hard reality is you are going to sweat, you are going to smell. And I promise you guys, not a single person on trail is going to care. Now, if you wanna carry a little bit of deodorant with you, which is something that I usually do when I get out there on trail, I personally carry a little bit of deodorant that I have melted down into a chapstick tube. You look at it, you know, the size of a chapstick tube worth of deodorant, which I think weighs like an ounce and a half, compared to a full change of clothes is two entirely different things. And the big thing with clothes is weight and bulk into your backpack. I pack the clothes that I'm gonna wear, a t-shirt to sleep in, a pair of tights to sleep in, and a spare pair of underwear and a spare pair of socks. And that's all I carry for extra clothing besides insulation layers like my puffy jacket. So if my clothes are really, really, really rank and I get to camp early enough, I will just rinse my clothes out in a creek and hang them up somewhere to dry. And I've got, you know, a nice somewhat fresh pair of clothes to wear in the morning but carrying a full extra set of clothes to hike in the next day is completely overkill and it just adds a ton of unnecessary weight and bulk to your backpack which is going to force you to carry a bigger backpack which is going to weigh more and one of the things that Maddie is big on is carrying a little bit less weight on your back to make those days significantly more comfortable for you. And if that sounds like something that you would be into, I've got an entire playlist full of weight saving backpacking tips and I'll fire that right here for you guys. So when you're done with this video, you guys know the drill, find a video in that playlist, check it out. And as always, I am Maddie. Thank you guys so dang much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.